Welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer Podcast. No, I can't do ASMR. Um, thank you so much for coming <laughs> for coming and listening. We are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and SoundCloud. And if you're listening right now on iTunes, please go and leave a five-star review. Um, it can say anything. This review can say anything, and I'll read it. For example, here's one from Ed. Edmed66. He said, outstanding. Chrissy Mayer brings a funny, irreverent style to her interviews, sometimes serious, sometimes hilarious, but always engaging and brings a charm that people open up to. This podcast should be on your must listen to list. Thanks, Ed. See, was that so hard? Leave a five star review. <laughs> uh, job, Ed. <laughs> Good job, Ed. Speaking of awesome, Silk City Hot Sauce is fucking awesome. I can't say enough about this. Uh, these guys and their product. Go to SilkCityHotSauce.com. Use the promo code CMP. You're going to get 15% off your whole order, and they're going to throw in for free for you a bottle of uh, cherry sriracha. It's pretty hot. you got to refrigerate it after opening, just like everything in life. Uh, and they're going to send you some dope stickers, so please go to SilkCityHotSauce.com. Use the promo code CMP. Um, I like these guys because there's no weird shit in their hot sauce. It's all made in earthy, crunchy Vermont. This is like five ingredients. You know what I mean? Like I, that puts me at ease. And it also puts me at ease masturbating. <laughs> Adam and Eve says that the best part of staying at home is playing at home. Go to adamandeve.com. Use the special code CMP at checkout so you can get almost any item online for 50% off. And when you use this discount code CMP, you're entitled to special gifts like six spicy movies, a three-piece bonus set. And no matter what, you're going to get free delivery. Whether you order a pair of handcuffs or a single butt plug, you're going to get free delivery. Adam and Eve has thousands of gifts, toys, and movies to help us lock down some great sex. Isaac, how's your sex life been lately? Oh, it's good. I'm about to get on, use that promo code and buy a, a Sibian or something. Ooh. <laughs> Free shipping. I don't know. Yeah. Do they have Sibians? I don't know. I, what is a Sibian? I'm picturing <laughs> oh, it's like a symbol. It's work. It's, it's uh, so like back in the day on the uh, Howard Stern show, they had uh, this device. It was looked like a sort of like a tiny saddle. Oh, yes. It plugged into the wall, you know, and like you could control the uh the vibration yes of course i remember that yeah and yeah. the girls would like sit on it yes oh, carbon electro was on there once it was kind of the one that i saw forever ago but. and it probably launched a huge crush like a decade-long crush for carbon <laughs> yeah. electro yeah exactly um i wonder if adam and eve has one of these but you know how you're gonna find out go on to adameve.com and use the promo code cmp get a vibrating saddle for 50 percent off um Guys, I'm so excited to intro this guest, but also tell you about a show. That's a lot of people are like, where's your comedy? Do you do stand up? Are you even a comedian anymore? Or do you just dabble? But I'm here to tell you, I'm no longer dabbling. I have a headlining show coming up on October 21st. Uh, let's see what day of the week that is. Dun, dun, dun. Does it even matter anymore? All the days of the week are blending together. It's Wednesday, October 21st. At 8.30 p.m. at Tiff's Ale House in Morris Plains, New Jersey. Mike Figs, uh, my little co-host. Co co-host? He mostly sits on the couch. But if you watch Wet Spot, you'll know Mike Figs, and he'll be opening for me. So I'm really excited about that show. I'm really good, excited to be headlining, doing real stand-up again. I love these outdoor shows, but, you know. I really get to sink my teeth in, into this juicy headlining set. Speaking of juicy... This guest is juicy. You're gonna you're gonna recognize him uh, from the Free Britney swap cast and from the the Hollywood Diva swap cast. Uh, we did a couple weeks months back. This guy is super smart, super cool. Everybody I meet from the conspiracy theory world is is like my new best friend, and I think this guy will be your new best friend too. Isaac Weishaupt. I'm not even saying your last night name uh, right. It's, Why sorry, it's not even my real last name. No worries. What? No worries. Okay. I was, <laughs> I was going to be like, are you German? Do our families know each other? But uh, I am German, but that's not my real last name. Uh, and that, that's a good, that's a good little segue because that, that's the first question everyone asks <laughs> because people who have any form of red pillage, immediately say, wait a minute, you're related to the founder of the Bavarian Illuminati, Adam Weishaupt. And it's not oh, it's true. It's Weishaupt. Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah. And it's a fake, it's a pseudonym I came up with 10 years ago when I started this whole ordeal, started blogging and uh, terrible, 
terrible pseudonym. Shouldn't have used it, but here I am using it, having to defend it every day. At least That's you're okay. smart enough to have thought of a stage name for yourself. Like it never occurred to me to think of a different name. And I was always <laughs> just like, whoa, mayor, let's do it. And, um, you well, know, the conspiracy uh, subculture is a CD one at best. So, you know, it takes, I always say, it always takes one uh, Mark David Chapman to bring this whole house of cards down for me. So you got you to protect it yourself. It does. And if there's one, you know, I feel like conspiracy theorists all get looped in together and it's so easy for the lay person to be like, Oh, are you like Alex Jones? Just in the way that somebody who doesn't know a lot about comedy looks at me and goes, Oh, are you like Amy Schumer? They just take the one person they know in that category and they want to do broad stroke everybody. Um, which is interesting because speaking of going against the grain in the conspiracy community, you just saw cuties. Yes. Uh, yes, I did. I watched it and I am still formulating my opinion. I didn't even want to watch this damn movie. Right. So like uh, for the, for the audience, who's probably not familiar with me or my shtick. So I, I, I do, you know, I do podcasting and I'm on the Instagram and all that stuff. Right. And Twitter and all that. And for weeks now, since that promotional poster came out for the Netflix show cuties, everyone in the conspiracy truth of world has been, incessantly fighting it oh my god's normalizing pedophilia and we need to get rid of it and netflix proceeded with releasing it and then you know that re resurgence of oh my god cancel netflix because they're promoting pedophilia and like and i've been observing this and i'm like well okay whatever and uh you know my shtick is pop culture uh lately i've been going real hard on aliens like i wrote my first book on it in fact it's I just published the Kindle version, the paperbacks are, and the audible version are in route. So I've been, and, and my whole stick is occult symbolism and the history of the occult as it is influenced into entertainment. So for me to discuss the, the pedophilia elements, like it's not out of my wheelhouse, but like, it's not my main focus. Uh, that being said, I have done several shows on adrenochrome. I did a whole expose of Stanley Kubrick's Lolita film, which is shocking. If you watch it today, uh, some of the coded language they use, they even have some elements of uh, the Wayfair furniture conspiracy, which no I No way. Yeah. Like what? Um, so, okay. So let's, let's get into that. So, and I did like a, the, I did a show on the Wayfair conspiracy and it, I think it's the most popular show I did this year. Uh, and I did one on Kobe when he died. That was really popular. Anyway. So in Lolita, the real short form of this is that there's a character named Humbert Humbert, and he's like the, the pedophilia guy. He's the guy that is in love with the young girl named Lolita. And he is his sort of adversary in the movie, this guy named uh, Quilty, played by Peter Sellers. Quilty is sort of the handler in the film. He's the handler that sets people up with young girls, or whatever and some of that you have to read between the lines but when you when you watch it you can see that like a Ghislaine and, Maxwell yes which ironically Peter Sellers daughter was Heidi Fleiss's Ghislaine Maxwell anyway Whoa. so the so in the film at the very beginning so it's like a Pulp Fiction style the beginning shows you the end and it's Humbert Humbert with a confrontation with Quilty because he's in they're both in love with Lolita you know and and Humbert's threatening to kill him Quilty's like trying to plead for his life. He says, hey, I can arrange for you to witness executions, just you, you alone. And I can have, I can get you some people that can be your furniture, you know, like a yellow chair. And, and like Whoa. these, and, and I'm not taking that out of context. Like that's how it's laid into the dialogue. And when you're watching it, you're like, what the hell is he talking about? And then you watch the rest of the film and it still makes no sense. So is, are they kind of like alluding to like, uh, I don't know, get a kid and you can sit on them or something like that? Or they're like actual that the kids will come in the furniture or that? I have no idea. That's, huh. that's literally the only element of the movie where they discuss this. Uh, and, the, and the reason I watched it, uh, shout out, my man Skinny Fresh told me about, uh, and I, I meant to watch Lodi for a long time. I did a whole expose on Kubrick called Kubrick's Code, where I went through The Shining, Clockwork Orange, 2001 A Space Odyssey and Eyes Wide Shut. Oh, which are cool. the most popular films with full of symbolism and all this stuff. And I kept putting it on the back burner to watch Lolita and I finally did. And, and it was, I mean, I bet it was two weeks before the Wayfair conspiracy popped off and I did my show 
on Lolita and I made a mention to it. I even played the clip on the show and I was like, Whoa. this was kind of weird. Like he's talking about arranging to witness executions and using people as furniture. And then two weeks later, Wayfair pops off. So then I revisited that for the Wayfair show. Um, wow. Yeah, it's, it's a- uh, It almost uh, sounds like, you know how like the Pizzagate code applies to food? And it's like, is there another code that applies to like furniture or home yeah. goods or like- yeah. And, and, that, yeah. and that pizza thing, that's one of the areas that um, I don't get into too often, but I, I see the, the coded language and I see the cover up by the mainstream media and like, it's undeniable to me, uh, which, which, yeah, let's answer your question about cuties, right? So I'm still formulating my opinion. So many in the truth community were up in arms about this movie and I, I wasn't going to touch it. I was like, I don't want. A, I don't want to see this, and B, like, whatever. Like, there's enough people focusing on this. That... Like, I'm not going to touch this movie until it's 18. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me... yeah, so I, I waited and waited, and finally, like, I sometimes I get overwhelmed with comments and people tell me to watch it. And I said, okay, fine, I'll watch the damn movie. So I watched it, and, like, it's cringy as hell. I mean, there's, there's elements of it that I question. You know, I, I've got two two viewpoints on this movie. On one side, I support the truther community and their persecution of Netflix and this movie, even though I love Netflix, it, it breaks my heart to think that I would ask to cancel Netflix. And I'm right, because Cobra Kai. Ugh. I mean, good God, man. I mean, so how good. much entertainment can you ask for for 10 bucks? So good. Anyway. Yeah, so, I was really torn about that too. <laughs> so I, on the one hand, but I don't jump to conclusions. I'm, I'm kind of the most... I don't know. I'm kind of an outsider in the truth or community in the sense that like I try to keep a level head about things a little bit. And I watched it before I came to any conclusions. And as I was watching it, the cinematography, I said, Holy crap, this is like, this is like pedo bait. I bet like there's pedos out there that would really, this is a gratifying movie for them, you know, which is disgusting. They zoom in on the crotch, just in the clips that I've it's seen, they so zoom in on the crotch, they zoom in on their butts. Yes. Um, I've heard that there's like the 11 year old girl like bears her boobs or yep. not non boobs. Yeah. You um, totally see this, this girl's nipple. There's um, zo they're zoomed in on these girls twerking. I mean, it's throughout the whole movie. Right. And so on the one level, I'm like, good God, that's excessive. But then on the other hand, if you look at what the director claimed the movie was about, and, and like I said, I, I actually didn't read anything about the movie before I watched it. I just let my own opinions take over. And I, I watched it and thought, okay, yeah, on one hand, this is gross. On the other hand, like, to me, it seemed more of like, a, this is the reality that young girls are facing. And isn't that disturbing? And shouldn't we ask questions about our society and, po and our culture and the sexualization of women that these young girls witness and then want to emulate, you know? Yeah. Uh, because, you know, I, I've got, uh, there's young girls in my family that um, are, are too young to be listening to Cardi B's wet ass pussy. And like, they're, they're texting the lyrics to their friends. Like I've seen it. With my How own old eyes. are they? Like, um, 13. Oh, and I'm man. like, so on one hand, I'm like, this is our culture and it's a little disturbing, but like I, I was a young man into all this, uh, you know, playboys and stuff when I was young, you know, 11, 12 years old. Uh, and you know, it's just, it's the way it is. And the director is kind of like, we need to be careful. We need to have some conversation with our daughters about this kind of stuff. And I don't have kids. So like, I don't have a dog in this fight besides not wanting kids to get trafficked. And um, yeah. so like, I'm kind of torn. Cause on one hand I get her point and, when I was a young man, when I was, uh, let's see, how old was I? Like about 15. When young kids Isaac. Came out. And, and kids came out and I remember me and all my friends loved it. You know, these, these, these other young guys were skateboarding and drinking and doing drugs. And I was like, yeah, cool. This is like our life. This is what we do. And then at the end, like the, he, he rapes this unconscious chick. And even as a young, young, young man, I was like, well, that was completely unacceptable. And like, that's disturbing. I, I, was, I was disturbed as like a 15 year old kid by the yeah. end of this movie. You're like, I think I can do better than an unconscious woman or girl. You know, I would like her to be conscious, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I think that, I think the director, um, Harmony Corinne, who's done Spring Breakers, one of the greatest movies of all time. Uh, I think, you know, he was just, sometimes films reflect reality and sometimes it's disturbing to look at reality, but like, I'm, I don't get offended by much and I don't get disturbed by much. I've I've seen a lot of things and 
for us to just be like, oh, cancel the movie, cancel Netflix. And it, like, it's like almost like digging your head, burying your head in the sand and, hmm. and just covering your eyes like, oh, it's scary, it's scary. And it's like, no, this is, there's, there's people out there that put their young daughters in these dance contests. And I've seen it. I've been to one of these where these little girls are like twerking and doing stripper moves. Like, this is what happens. So like, should we maybe have a little closer relationship with our, with our daughters? And, you know, I'm not saying it's like, don't, like sex is bad and don't, you know, don't do that. I'm just saying like parents need to have a better relationship with their kids. Uh, make sure they're not getting scooped up by these pedos and trying to like, you know, yeah. moderate what they do in their lives a little bit. And as someone who also doesn't have a parent, but it's like, I have like very young nieces and nephews and I have a, well, I'm a step girlfriend. There's no even word for that. That's what I'm annoyed at. There's no word for like the person who's dating somebody with a kid, but it's like, I've known him for five years, but I'm not a stepmom, So I don't get, I don't get the seat at the little league games. But the point is, <laughs> it's like, uh, I, I imagine being a parent is a constant struggle between like preparing your kid for stuff, but you don't want to like show them anything too early. Right. So it's like, it's possible to like be starting to explore your sexuality as early as 11. But if your kid is not at all leaning towards that way, like, do you want to talk? You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's this like balance of support versus are they ready? Are they not ready? Is it, is it exposing them to it too soon? But it's like, it seems it's more so the case of the parents have no idea that kids and teens are, you know, engage, they're sexually active already. It's like, I never got the talk. Nobody that I was friends with ever like got the talk. We were just like figuring it out starting between like 14, 15, 16 years old. We were all like, I guess we're just going to give bad hand jobs for years <laughs> until we figure it out. <laughs> right. And, 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 and to, to sort of one of the, one of the ideas that I'm formulating as my, my, cause I don't know my opinion on this movie yet, but one of the ideas I'm formulating is kind of like, isn't that the point of this film is to sort of like start a dialogue and to get people aware that like, this is what's happening to these young girls. Like whether you want to believe that or not, you know, like this is what's happening and you need to like take a look at it and figure out how to work, how to manage this. You know what I mean? But it's as somebody who looks at the occult in Hollywood and our culture there's also the argument of the head guy at Sundance um, basically is kind of a pedo and, and like, you know, it has kind of a, re- a record and, and this director won a directing award in Sundance for this movie. Um, you look at the, the, how it's shot, you know, the, the angles, the cinematography, like you said, it's almost like forcing the viewer's eye to look at these girls the way a pedophile would, which is like, oh, it's, it's, it's like, how do you show a thing without showing it? A lot of people have said, oh, this should have been a documentary, but who knows? Like, would, a, would that have really made a difference in the end? So, right. And, and, and here's, the, here's another element that I'm floating around is like, here we are in America. We've got these conservative politicians that are out there doing the witch hunt on this show and like want to investigate it and dig into Netflix and the filmmaker because this movie came out of France. And it's like, why don't you guys turn those cannons on Hollywood? Like, here in America, like, we're the kings of this shit. Like, we start we locally. Yeah. Superhero movies, these directors are raping the kids. Like, why don't you worry about that where it's really happening instead of the film that talks about it? Like, mm. so, like, it's funny to me where we choose to be outraged. No one's out there canceling uh, Disney Plus because of they got X Men, which has Brian Singer, who's a noted pedophile on, uh, you know, if you watch An Open Secret, like, uh, it's just funny to me what we decide to be outraged about. But you know then I mean? again, Disney Plus has The Mandalorian. So, <laughs> so again, I, seen that. I don't watch. Disney oh Plus. my god, it is so good! It is so good. And I don't like, know if you can hear me rolling my eyes. I, I, my, I, don't, I don't watch Star Wars, so I don't know. Really? Okay. Well, my boyfriend is a huge Star Wars nerd. He got me into it. It's really good. It's like okay, if you're listening well, and you, you know, like to fight about who ruined what star wars movie you will enjoy the mandalorian no matter what so <laughs> god i'm really i did watch hamilton though i watched hamilton on disney plus that was actually oh, really good i just I like musicals greatly but saw hamilton it. when it was still a thing when broadway was still a thing when it was relatively new i don't know if you remember um what was that documentary that came out about that that um festival that fell through 
Fire what was festival? it called? Fire festival. So the guy who was in charge of fire festival was also had also was like the CEO of this company called Magnesis, which is like a millennial social networking group, like we'd meet in person or whatever. And I'm on this mailing list, right? So through that, I was able to get like exclusive tickets to Hamilton, like exclusive my ass. I think they were still, they were like really expensive. They might've been like $200 each, but I got them for my sister, who's a huge history nerd and she wanted to go. And I was like, (laughs) all right, we'll go. It was good. I don't think it was hundreds of dollars good, but. Yeah, I I agree. Like I, I, I've been to a few musicals and like, I dislike most of them. And I always think they're, I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into it. Don't get me wrong, but like, I'd rather spend my hundred bucks on something else. Like, it's just not my thing. Yeah. But uh, Hamilton was really good on the, on my couch. Ooh. <laughs> Watching it from the hijacked password that I've got for Disney plus. Wow. You're such a bad boy. <laughs> and, and you should tell your uh, history nerd sister to listen to the show. Cause we're going to do a little uh, history of America. Ooh. Okay. I will. Yeah, I think, I mean, she sometimes listens to stuff. Um, she's probably the most supportive member of my family. Oh, yeah. Good. Everybody else is like, how's oh, clown school? No, I think, I think when I interviewed Roger Stone, they were like, well, oh, how'd you do that? Yeah, you're making big moves. <laughs> so big, so big. And now I have Isaac, not even your real last name, <laughs> Weishaupt. So do you, so I don't know if you saw any sort of occult themes in cuties i mean that's still in that may not be your focus but i also want to know how did you get into this like what's what piqued your curiosity to begin with to like start down this path of of this research yeah uh so it started let me go way back you know when i was a teenager in the 90s x files was popular i i didn't see every episode but like i was always fascinated by the alien ufo storylines in it uh, Fire in the Sky about the uh, Travis Walton abduction case was was really influential back then. Then in, I believe it was 2002, I bought Bill Cooper's Behold a Pale Horse. Ooh. Back when you had to find them in actual bookstores, I had to find one because my buddy told me about it. And I read it. I was like, oh, this is great, you know. And then in like 2006, 2005, 2006, I, someone let me borrow a VHS copy of David Icke's Freedom Road which was like this really long video of him just like screaming at you in the camera about obelisk penis power and all this crazy stuff. And like, I remember watching it. (laughs) It is. And you know, this is a long time ago, like 2005, I was watching this and I, and none of it made any sense. And I'd be constantly like, what is he talking about? And I, I would always like fall asleep because it was just like hypnotic trance of conspiracy talk, you know? And I, I, I somehow, I, I ripped a copy of the audio so I could listen to it at work while I was like, I, I was a maintenance guy back then. I'd build these little generator things and um, I would just listen to it over and over and over and over trying to figure out what he was saying. And like, it started to make more sense. And then in 2011, and that was the, that was the extent of my conspiracy red pilling, those two things. Then in 2011, I started a blog, IlluminatiWatcher.com, started writing people were really into the conspiracy stuff. So I expanded to a YouTube channel in like 2013 or 14, something like that. Uh, Talking about all these things, wrote a few books starting in 2012. I've written like eight or nine books at this point, uh, all on Amazon and Audible. And I didn't even think I've read eight or nine books. (laughs) Yeah, it was, (laughs) it's a, it's a weird thing. Uh, It's what happens is like, I go to write an article, uh, how it started. It was like, go to write an article and like, it would be too long of an article to fit properly on a web page, sort of. So I would just elaborate on it and made it a book. So wow. um, then I started podcasting, doing radio shows in like four, 13 or 14. Then things got, things got hot in 2016. Um, I got banned off of YouTube. Google shadow banned me so that Damn. I didn't show up on the first page anymore. Damn. And then I pivoted over to podcasting mostly around that time. And the podcast is, is taking off now, but given my 10 year history in this realm, I would suggest that they're going to ban me off of podcasting, which sounds absurd, but like who would have thought that they would cancel me off of YouTube. So. Yeah. What do you think it was? What do you think? Uh... Oh, I, I know what it was. I can tell you what it was. So the, the way it works, first off, I don't think anyone works at YouTube. I don't think there's any human beings there. 
uh, because every time you try to discuss any issues with them, and I had I had seventy three thousand subscribers at the time. What? And yeah, and when you break, I forget what the number was. I think when I broke like fifty thousand subscribers, they gave me access to a, a, pri a different email for support of a more responsive Ooh. YouTube support, right? And and they even gave me access to there's a, there was a program they had run in where you could go to the studio in California and you could access their video, I don't know, editing software or something, but I, I never did it, but I thought, oh, that's cool. I'm big time now, you know? Yeah. Well, then in uh, 16, I made, and I make videos on pop culture, you know, Beyonce, Ariana Grande, Taylor Swift, all these artists, and like, they'll make a music video and then I'll discuss occult symbolism within it. And at the time, and YouTube was like rife with conspiracy personalities, Mark Dice being one of them. And like Mark Dice is kind of, uh, you know, he, he kind of takes more of this sort of oppressive angle where he's like really talks bad about the, the people. Like it'll be like, you know, uh, Taylor Swift, the slut, you know, and like, he's always like real dickheadish about things. And like, that's a hundred percent, not me. Like, I'm just like, I'm just here to talk about the symbolism. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know these, these people, you know, yeah. I don't wanna, not trying to belittle them. So it's curious to me, that they banned me and not Mark Dice. But um, let me tell you that I'll, t I'll name the names as to what happened. In 16, I did a video about uh, Taylor Swift, one of her videos, and they shut me out of my account. I went to log in and it said, you've been shut out of your account. You need to take this course on, um, it was some course on like how to not, I don't know. How to not yeah. piss off YouTube. How to not violate the community guidelines as well. So I take this course. I'm like, what the hell is this? Out of nowhere, right? And then I get in and I look through the copyright complaint and it was her management company. It was like Red Dog Media or something. And I looked it up and sure enough, that's her management company. They filed a complaint against my video, which I found curious because like, it's not like I'm using her song. It's not like I'm calling her a slut. I'm not doing any of these things. And I thought, well, that's bizarre. I won't, I won't, uh, I'll be careful with Taylor Swift. Well, then a few months later, I did one on Ariana Grande about her song, uh, God is Woman, I think it's called. Oh yeah, that and, was a big one. Yeah, and I just talked about the symbolism of the earth, goddess, mother, Gaia kind of connections, same thing. And the next day I go to log in and it says, you've been terminated. You can't what? open another YouTube under any other name, nothing, you're done. And they, sh they delete all your videos. They delete all your subscribers. You get nothing. Oh my so, God. Because I am a bad boy. I started another YouTube channel under my name, Isaac Weishaupt. The first one was called Illuminati Watcher One. And I started another one called Isaac Weishaupt. Like two months later, I kept petitioning, kept petitioning. And they keep giving you these automated bullshit responses. Oh, violate community guidelines. And they never tell you why. And I'm like, why though? Because I'm watching these Mark Dice videos. I'm like, this guy's yeah. gross. Like, How just, many followers did he have? Uh, he's probably got a million. I don't know. He's got a ton. Uh, so maybe Mark he's Dice too big. big personality. Maybe he's too big because I know that was another tactic of Facebook. They would target the littler, the littler, the smaller accounts, people oh, really? with like smaller followings. Yeah. Yeah. They were like very blatantly their, their content moderators. We did an episode on this with a uh, project Veritas and mm -hmm. there was a guy who was a whistleblower who worked at Facebook as a content moderator. And they would just be like openly flagging, deleting, censoring posts from conservatives, Republicans, anything pro Trump and like yeah. be happy about it. And he's yeah. like, and they would say, well, we can't attack Trump because people will notice that, you know, we can't censor him, but we can get the little guy. And so it sounds similar with YouTube. Interesting. Yeah. And, and it's funny to me because um, a lot of, a lot of truthers sort of echo that opinion because for some reason, since, excuse me, sorry, two apologies. First off, my throat's jacked up because uh, I live in Utah and these wildfires in California got us. Oh no, there. really? Oh yeah. shit. I didn't realize it was like, <clears throat> Yeah, so I have to constantly okay, clear too. my throat. Freaking pumpkin spice tea, like a basic bitch that I am. Does your air, like when you look out the window, does it look? Oh different? yeah, it, yeah. Because like usually you can see the mountains, and like you can't really see them as much. It, there, there's levels. Some days it's really nasty, and like they give you a red air day, and you're not supposed to like be outside at all. Whoa. But, but you know. Anyway, so my throat's a little jacked up. Anyway, um, yeah. What was funny to me was like somehow the truther movement has been 
I don't want to say hijacked, but co-opted by the right wing and like pro Trumpers. Mm -hmm. And like, it's funny to me because like, I'm come, I come from the camp of what David Icke taught me and what Bill Cooper taught me. And it's like the left and right are both uh, two sides of the same coin and we're being, it's the, what they call the Hegelian dialectic. And it's like these two opposing forces are actually drawing you down the same path. Just it's like, and I say, I use it. I say like, you know, which they dangle different carrots. Like which carrot do you want to reach for is, is kind of how I look at it. So like to me, I've, I've found this weird co-opting of the right wing to join the QAnon movement as a psyop, um, mm. which is curious to me. Uh, anyway, yeah, yeah, I've wondered that too. And that's something I talk a lot about with my boyfriend, like, oh, well, what if Trump is really in on it? And right, he's just like the other side of the coin, you know, like, what if he's not really taken yeah. down, you know, yeah, international and, and I pedal rings? I don't, um, I'm not like advocating for one party or no, over another or one candidate over another. I just, my whole shtick is just looking at the occult symbolism in entertainment and like when i was researching some of this QAnon stuff i found a curious link that might lead into QAnon, mm. um, and it's kind of a long diatribe about this it's the idea of this uh the raising of osiris ritual that they do every presidential inauguration what's uh, that about well okay let's see if i can i'll try to give you a a, a more condensed version but basically you, you, there's a couple ideas we have to start out with uh, one people have to understand that the origins of america it has this secret destiny right there's there's this theme this idea that you'll find in your research that the founding fathers and the literature discussing america even before it was founded all have this idea of a new world order and this perfected society. Uh, Francis Bacon called it the New Atlantis. Um, and all of these sort of pagan occult mystery religions that were being persecuted in Europe, they started a country here in America where religious freedoms were the key and freedom of speech. And one of the ideas is that they've done this because they wanted to enable this occult teaching to survive here in America so that one day we could rise as the superpower that is the example of the perfected occult society. Um, Francis Bacon talked about it as restoring the golden age of Osiris. Um, Cause these, these elitists, these, if you want to call them the Illuminati or whatever. Globalists, right? The globalist, the Chinese globalist. Oh. <laughs> I, can't, um, I can't do it yet. I'm working on it. <laughs> they, um, they, uh, they believe in a perfected society. And I would argue that given everything I know about the elites, it's a perfected society for them, not us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Alice, we talked about this on the show we did with Sam Tripley there, but Alistair Crowley said the slave shall serve. And I would argue that this is the mentality of uh, the elites. I think they, they think they're God's chosen people. They deserve to be in that position. And we are just the, uh, you know, the Peasants. mouth breathers that need to be told how to live. Uh, so that's, and, and, you know, and you can go on with symbolism about the great seal, the Novus Ordo Seclorum, you know, you got the pyramid with the all seeing eye at the top. Uh, and that's the idea is like the capstone. That's is, on our money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the capstone is like the, the achievement of this perfected society, this new world order. And, you know, you go through a lot of speeches. Uh, George W. Bush talked about the new order of the ages and the ancient hope that needed to be fulfilled because, you know, he's a Yale bonesman, skull and bones. Cause, cause, and, I, and I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure out how far to zoom out for your audience. You, you've got this idea that there are, there was these mystery teachings, these forbidden knowledge occult teachings, esoteric, whatever you want to call it, that floated around in the early formation of civilization in, in ancient Greece and Rome and- um, Like the stone like, cutters from the Simpsons. I mean, the people Simpsons. who've seen that. Yeah, like secret society. Yes. People yes. like to lump in the Freemasons with that, the Jesuits, yeah, the yes. any, any like group like that where, where it seems secrety. Yeah. yeah. And, 
and and they have these secret teachings, right? And Pythagoras, he synthesized a lot of these. He was kind of the first, he was kind of the first OG uh, secret society leader. And he synthesized, he went around and traveled all these countries and synthesized these teachings to go over into Mesopotamia and all this, You mean this, right? Pythagoras of the Pythagorean the theorem? Yes. <laughs> yeah, because you'll, one. you'll find that in science. And, the, and, uh, and I've, got a, uh, I've got a master's in engineering and I took, I've got a math minor. So I've taken, uh, you know, calculus, one, two, three, linears, diffs, everything. And Sounds these gross. names that I, <laughs> yeah, it is gross. <laughs> it, I'm a math nerd at heart. And these names that I studied in college all show up in my occult research because Whoa. it's this weird sort of connection that these scientists, um, in fact, Thomas Jefferson even said that the three greatest men that ever lived were Isaac Newton, John Locke, and Francis Bacon. Um, wow. You know, and, and these are all like very influential in the founding of America. Like Francis Bacon was, uh, he was revered. He's one of the guys that set up the original colonies. And you have to understand a little bit on, on these ancient teachings, right? And these mystery schools, they believe in a whole different version of history and reality. Okay. Uh, they, in ancient Egypt, they have the Osiris and Isis myth. And it was this story about how Osiris was killed by his brother Set and cut into 14 pieces. And his Osiris's wife, his consort Isis, she was real sad and she went around trying to find all the pieces. She found 13 of the pieces, but there was one missing and you know, which one was missing. It was His the penis. penis. <laughs> and if it so were me, I would have found it right away. I would have found it first. <laughs> well, they, the story is that he threw it in a, in a river and a fish ate it or something. Oh, along. Boy. There's different variations. He was the chumming the water. Exactly. So there's different variations of it, but that's the, the gist of it is that she found 13 of them, fashioned a new penis out of a golden obelisk, had a, another god named Thoth, a magician, through magic, through ritual magic, bring him back to life, and he is now Horus. As the, or I'm sorry, I'm missing a piece. Thoth brought him back to life to, enough to energize his penis to impregnate Isis so that she could give birth to Horus, which so is... She Got knocked up with the golden penis or the yes. detachable penis? The golden obelisk penis that she fashioned okay. through magic, okay? So, like, you know, it just sounds like some silly ancient Egyptian stuff, right? But the reason, and you go to D.C., that's all you'll, Washington, D.C., that's all you'll find are these pagan statues of gods and goddesses and obelisks, like the Washington Monument, which is, yeah. which has its own amount of, numerology and symbolism that clearly ties into uh the antichrist <laughs> really because you most people look at it and go all right obviously it's phallic so many buildings are phallic but it just seems kind of standard looking yeah they the so the height of it is 555 feet above ground which is 6660 inches and hmm. supposedly it goes 111 feet underground you know because it's like a retaining wall almost like you got to have a bunch underground too to support that that height i don't know if that's true i, I never yeah. was able to confirm that but they claim it's 111 feet underground which equals 666 the base of it as a square is 55 and a half feet um uh interesting so a lot of repeating numbers and yeah. i look into that stuff like that numerology stuff because it like links into my other passion astrology <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what certain numbers mean. And uh -huh. in the episode from yesterday with Jay Dyer, he, he can verify that like these numbers have meaning and they're almost like spells. You know, when you create something, he was talking about how like 9-11, what certain, the flight numbers, the time, all of it had meaning. And it's, you know, supposedly all goes into this making of this spell. Yeah, that like they, they call it the twilight language and, you know, these occultists, they, they believe in this stuff, whether, whether the masses want to believe in this stuff and, or not, it doesn't really matter. The, the, the elite or these, this group, you know, and I'm, I'm not saying every, you know, every single politician in DC is in on the secret. Like there's, there's just a handful of these people, right. Is the idea. Yeah. So the, go, going back to that obelisk, the reason that obelisk is there as the Washington monument is because it, it goes back to this, the ancient Egyptian rituals and, and Tom Horn is a researcher who 
you know, I didn't come up with all this. He, he, he researched this and found this stuff. Uh, but he said that, that what happens is there's, there's a festival of Opet they, they used to do in Egypt after Osiris is passing. And every time they got a new Pharaoh, the Pharaoh would go through this ritual where he would go inside of what they called the dome of Isis. Meanwhile, they would perform incantations of magic the, through the sun god of Ra, they would energize the obelisk, which was right across from the Dome of Isis. That energization of the uh, penis of the obelisk would impregnate Isis that the pharaoh was standing inside of in the dome, and then the pharaoh would come out as Horus. He would be the resurrected form of Osiris. Wow. And that's what we do with every presidential inauguration, which is surprising, right? It is surprising. I'm just Googling um, Dome of Isis, and it's uh -huh. like the first thing I thought of was like, wow, that looks like Epstein's. <laughs> that <laughs> looks like the little like building that was on Epstein Island. Yeah, it may be, right? Maybe there's something there to it. But the, um, the, uh, the short version is that since Ronald Reagan, who was a big astrologist himself, right? He was into the occult, Manly P. Hall teachings and all this stuff. Uh, since Reagan... The ritual for the inauguration now is that the president comes out of the Capitol building, comes out the west side of the Capitol building facing the Washington Monument. He does the oath and he's inside of the, the Capitol building, which has the dome, which has the goddess of liberty on top. That's the dome of Isis. And every January 20th, every January 20th at high noon, they do this ritual and it has to happen on that day at that time because that's when the sun is at its maximum strength, wow. energizing the Washington Monument to impregnate the Capitol building, Dome of Isis, so that the president that comes out is the new Horus, the new Osiris. Wow. The yeah, and, and Tom Horn asserts that if you go dead north of the Washington Monument, you'll find the headquarters of the 33rd degree of Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, the Herodome. And in that building, the theory, the claim is that he made is that during every inauguration, these 33rd degree Freemasons are conducting magic rituals to purposefully try to make this um, reincarnation, the resurrection of Osiris happen. They don't care which president, it happens with every president. They don't care which one it is. They just want it to happen. Why? And because it goes back to their, their secret alternative view of the history. Uh, you go back to Plato. Plato talked about this kind of stuff, too. And he said that uh, democracy would eventually give way to uh, tyranny. And mm -hmm. they, they think that there's a... And, and this is what my, my thing is, is like, I worry about authoritarianism. Yeah, yeah, me too. And it's like the, the games that are being played right now, it's like the all the little yes. chess pieces, right, that are being moved, things that are being orchestrated in culture with the, you know, like everything that's going on right now. I, it, to me, it seems like kind of on purpose to, to like get everybody into a place where we need an authoritarian regime to like, yes. you know. That's oh, what they want need, us to believe. We just need to get, so we get us to a place where we're so desperate for a shred of normalcy that we hand over our rights and we sign on to an, an authorita authoritarian regime that is <laughs> going to be icky and uh, yeah, that's it's going to be like China. Yeah. That's what 2020 has been all about, it seems. Uh, this order out of chaos, which is the motto of the 33rd degree of Freemasonry, it's order out of chaos. And, you know, you know, what did they call, what did Steve Bannon call Trump when he was running back in 16? They called him the chaos candidate. What? Right? And, and what's happening this year? It, it, it's pure chaos. Like, this is unprecedented chaos. Or at least that's what we're being led to believe. Right. You know? And, right. and like, like you said, and, and I did a, I did a review of the movie Joker in, I think it was December of 2019. I watched that. And that is kind of what, and, and the Joker is the agent of chaos. He's the agent of nihilism and chaos. And out of that, you get the opposing force of order, which like, which is Batman. Not, which is Batman. And I'm not saying that I'm not saying, Oh my God, defund the police, get rid of order entirely. Like you need law and order. Sure. But like, we just have to be careful. Like, I, and that's my whole shtick is like, I don't care who you vote for. Like, I'm not advocating one side or another. I'm just saying we just need to be, keep a level head because the, the orchestrators of the madness 
uh, can deceive people. And, and I'm concerned because I think even though 2020 is a year of, not to use a Q term, but of mass awakening, great awakening, a lot of people are, 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 are checking out conspiracies now more so than ever before. Uh, the numbers are still against us. There's a lot of people that just believe what they're told all the time. Oh yeah. Just look outside, see how many people are wearing a mask, walking around with nobody around, wearing a mask in their Mm -hmm. car, wearing a mask, going for a run. It blows my mind every day to see how many people are falling for it. Yeah. It's bizarre when they they wear it by themselves. I, you know, I, so crazy. We have to wear the mask here in the stores and stuff. And like, and I'm okay with it. That's one thing. Yeah. I did a whole show on the masks. Like, ultimately i'm like yeah i get it it's like cuties right like i get the argument the truth is presenting like i i understand but i'm also kind of like you know like i'll put the mask on i don't want i know someone who's got covid and um and they are what they call a long hauler uh, they've had it for a few months and oh, every wow. time she goes to do a physical activity um and and i don't want to give away too much but like she, every time she goes to do a physical activity like it wipes her out Wow. And I'm like, dude, if she I have to be on the older? couch for, she's no, like, no, younger. she crossfits. She crossfits. Oh, so she's in sick shape. Yeah. So she's yeah, one of absolutely. these people that's in great shape that got COVID. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's two months out done. And it's like, dude, I don't want this shit, man. Hmm. And I think it was cooked up in a lab and all that. It stuff. absolutely was it, just yesterday on Tucker um this chinese virologist who basically fled china because of censorship she was she was totally verifying that it was made in the lab in wuhan which is controlled by the chinese government and it was released on purpose like and i bet no other uh msm station is going to pick it up but the fact that it was on fox i was like all right this is kind of promising that's not bad shit that we all knew months ago we meaning us weirdos but now it's (laughs) nice to see that like at least on fox yeah, isn't it curious that no one's really talking about the origins of this thing? Like, how is mm-hmm. that not our biggest talking point of like, how do we prevent this from happening again? And because that- everyone's focused on getting enough toilet paper and canned goods and, and <laughs> arming up. And uh, everyone's just, it's hard to see the forest through the trees. Everyone's like, oh, wow, there's so much panic and chaos in our consciousness. And I think it's hard for people to look beyond that. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, I think, I think everyone just wants like normalcy and I'm right there with them. Like <laughs> I said it back in March. I was like, dude, at this point, like, just give me this weirdo creepy vaccine. That's probably going to do damage <sighs> to my body. Uh, I yeah. Know. And I joke about that. I'm actually yeah. going to avoid the vaccine yeah. as much as I can without going to prison. I feel like it's, I wouldn't be shocked if it was just like the other Bill Gates vaccines that had sterilizing effects. So yeah, that's that's. Yeah. A, I did a, I did like an eight part vaccine. Se- oh, here's here's a good one. I did an eight part vaccine series because I was not an anti vaxxer at all when this started, and I had a lot of people that kind of kept bombarding me with like, you yeah, need to talk about I wasn't either. Yeah, and and like I was always kind of like like I never take flu shots. Like I don't like it. No. I don't like the idea. Flu of shots are for pussies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I never did any, and I had the flu twice in the last uh, three years. I had the flu, and both times I was like, I'm gonna die. This sucks. But um. I did a full, like as in depth as one could go in like a month. And I, I published it all and I, I typed it all up as a, as a book that I was going to put on Amazon as well. I did the eight, wow. I did eight shows on it on my podcast and I typed up a book to put on, on Amazon. And mind you, I, like I said, I've written like maybe seven or eight books or something. And they all have weird ass titles like Illuminati, blood sacrifice, aliens, you know, all this crazy shit that should get you red flagged right off the bat. Right. <laughs> yeah. Never a problem. Never. I put mm. up this book called The Vaccine Conspiracy and they, they blocked it. They banned it. Wow. So yeah. the podcast that the book is based off of, are, is there anywhere people can listen to those still? Yeah, they're, they're all on my, on my uh, I, I've got the free feed and then I got like a Patreon feed where I do bonus episodes, but Ooh, on the free okay. feed, you can hear all eight. Of, and, I, and it's coming from a very rational approach because like when I, like I said, when I started, I was kind of like, okay, let me get the best arguments these anti-vaxxers have and I'll, I'll see if they got some merit. And like, I walked away after, you know, all this research and 70 pages of, which you can get the ebook for free. I've got it on my, uh, I, I got a store called the Gum Road store, like bubble gum. Gum uh, Roads. Yeah, gumroad.com backslash Isaac W. Ooh, okay. For free, because I, I, I got so frustrated, I just threw it on there for free, and wow, um, I had to change the title a little bit. I called it the vaccine controversy, <laughs> just to yeah. keep off the censors. But 
after what after all the research i walked away thinking like dude these things they, they should rebrand it as vaccines are kind of safe and kind of effective but they won't do huh. that they say they're safe right. and effective as if we should trust them 100 percent. and it's like that's just not the facts like they're not that safe and they're not that effective yeah i think that I, I think they're kind of safe and they're kind of effective but like you can miss me with that bullshit i don't want to take it yeah nerd, keep your weirdo vaccines i'll take my chances you know what i mean yeah it's it's but yeah it would be great if they were honest about kind of exactly. safe kind of effective eh, you know but yeah, then you, you know i'm listening to like my spotify because i don't pay for ad free spotify and then it's like they make it seem you know we've been conditioned to think it's so necessary that you're not a good parent unless you're vaxxing up everybody every year for flu season like protect your squad walgreens and it's like ugh, <laughs> i've never needed a flu shot my parents never gave a shit about give, getting the three of us flu shots and like we really didn't get sick very much so yeah and and yeah. there's a you know the video that gone viral about the two bakersfield doctors that were talking about like and, and it's hard to discern the truth you know what i mean like these doctors are on there like they're in one in one breath they're like this is unhealthy people need their immune systems to be exposed to all these germs because that, that's what your immune system does and then in the next breath they're like we have eight eight hospitals that are shut down because we don't have enough business and i'm like well are you doing this for financial wow. reasons or not dude mm. and 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 here's the and here's the catch is like well okay your body is supposed to be exposed to things so it can build up immunity but okay what about hiv like should i go get hiv you know all just to make sure i'm exposed to it like at least go know. get it the fun way yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like i don't know it's hard to know who to believe anymore with all this stuff and i think that's part of the chaos you know that they're sowing is uh, who do you trust you know big pharma the mainstream media like they've mm. all been proven to lie to us and it's good i really like your approach isaac because you keep an open mind you're not for one political party or another i i really like your approach because it's just like uh, keep your mind open and it's like you're just like hey consider this you know yeah. or also follow the money you know um yeah and, and it bothers better. me so many in the truth or community like they plant their flag so hard in the uh, in in one stance or another, and it's I don't know. It does a disservice. Like I, I appreciate everyone's got opinions. Like flat Earth, for example. Like you know, there's people that believe that stuff, and and I looked into it, and ultimately I don't believe it. But you know, you know, good for them if they want to believe that. But like they get so vocal about it, and like it becomes this meme and this joke, and it mm. makes. And I think that's done on purpose. I think it's orchestrated so that they can keep the masses sort of like ridiculing the fringes of conspiracy mm -hmm. and not even considering anything when you've got so many great thoughts coming out of the conspiracy world. It's so um, easy to make them look crazy. And it's just like you, know, you said, like the harder and the deeper you plant your flag, the harder it is to like uproot and move around. And that's what we should be you know. constantly doing is, and it's okay to be verbal about what you believe at the time, but I think we should be like, less harsh on others for because our opinions should be constantly changing and evolving given new information exactly yeah 100 percent. oh but Crazy. let me let me finish my thought on, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on osiris real quick just because i know we're running out of time um the reason why i say q is connected into this and there's more than just this i'm, I'm actually working on a couple of shows to sort of go through all the details on this Ooh. but q is the 17th letter of the alphabet and you know numerology speaks volumes in the twilight language uh so q is the 17th letter well osiris is represented by 17 uh because osiris plutarch asserts that he was killed on the 17th of the month um and to go further into that wait you know what today is uh oh the 17th of september oh no oh no now we did it now we did it <laughs> 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 but the but the um yeah so so and there's and there's a variety of reasons why that connects into everything but um yeah so like i've always been very suspicious of the qa non movement and uh that's that's gonna fit into my theory on it that i'll be working on over the next few weeks yeah it's it's interesting and do you think that the the well the far right or republicans have it's it's interesting like have they possibly taken over QAnon and it, it, right are there powers working to to, well, to sort of delegitimize it in a way there's some there's some theories that Steve Bannon is actually QAnon which to me Whoa. seems the most accurate of the theories 
from what I've read. I, I did an interview. I interviewed a guy named uh, Professor Ben Teitelbaum. He wrote a book called um, War for Eternity. And hmm. in the book, he hung out with Steve Bannon. And in the book, I'm going to wildly paraphrase from memory, so don't, <laughs> don't persecute me. But in the book, he basically confirms that Steve Bannon believes in the thing called traditionalism, which I didn't know what that meant when I first heard it. I thought, oh, that sounds like some conservative, I don't know, old timey thing. And, and what it is, is like, it's more bizarre than that. It's this idea that mankind has entered the Kali Yuga, which is the final age. And, what? And, what? And, we, and we've screwed up and gone so far off of the rails due to materialism that we need to, you know, finish off mankind and restart with this sort of, I don't know, authoritarian kind of idea of a leadership. Which is How is that going to be better? How would that possibly be better? It's, I don't know. You know, they, they, uh, they want to roll with an iron fist because they think they know what's best, whether you like it or not. And, you know, with, with all of this freedom of thought and press, you get this gross stuff like cuties. Mm-hmm. And, you know, how can you stand for that? Like, that's kind of like the, the that's kind of the, the rationale they want to set up. And like, and for me, I'm like, no, we, we need, we could have public forums about how cuties is disgusting. Like, let's do that instead of calling for Big Brother to come in and ban things and cancel culture and all this nonsense. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, you'll take one cuties every uh, 50 years, but, but what, what comes with that are a lot of really great movies too. And it doesn't mean you know yeah. just like maybe if there's a couple bad cops doesn't mean we have to defund the whole police right it's right, right. <laughs> it is <laughs> it is kind of scary i was just listening like earlier today about it was like this whole youtube video about how like we're in a simulation and then it kind of like took the pressure off like if it's just a projector like that's coming through me <laughs> then it's you like know. i don't know i was like i'm sort of comforted by this idea yeah, I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. But that's a that's like a Gnostic idea too. That's what you see in the Truman Show. It, it supports this idea of the simulation theory, which you know is what all the Silicon Valley nerds are trying to claim. And they're trying to like write code to hack the simulation theory to break us free from it. Like hmm. I always say, these nerds are going to kill us, and 2020 <laughs> is proving me more correct than ever. These nerds are going to kill us, right? So, like the theory was either the world is like a big computer or it's a projection coming from somewhere else where there's like this idea of a, right, like a big computer. Yeah, it's bizarre stuff, huh? Yeah, like you're born into your consciousness and it's just like an experiment, right? To see what you do with your 70, 80 years or whatever. And, but I I love the part of this video and I think John Paul Rice shared it to me because he always has cool shit. Um, But it was just like the idea that I wonder if this ties into the Osiris thing, like the 14 different pieces. And that kind of translates to like human consciousness, you know, like we're all one and like all the pieces, like, you know, if, almost like if you take a piece of the hologram, there's the whole image there, even if it's cut up and it's, I'm, I'm again, like paraphrasing this poorly, but the idea mm-hmm. that like, we're all one, our energy, our consciousness is all one. Um, and it basically goes to show you like how, powerful our thoughts and our feelings are and like that we create our own reality and um mm. you, you really have more control over your own destiny than you think just just by retooling your thoughts a bit you know that's a lot of the that's a lot of, and 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 I'm, I'm down with all that sort of line of thoughts i've read a lot of um buddhist type books and theories and new age stuff and a lot of that stuff is, is very helpful. And that, and that does fit into the occult idea of like ritual magic and where I went in my research for this alien book that I just wrote was the world of quantum. And I barely touch on it because like, it's, it's too smart for me to like, (laughs) I'm not going to read, you know, 10 books on this to write 20 pages about it, but um, quantum entanglement and this idea that we are, you know, you know, Einstein called it spooky action at a distance. It's this idea that we are connected uh, on some levels. And, and I do believe that like intuitively, like there is some kind of weird sort of ether sphere of connection. Uh, but I try to be careful with that line of thought because that, that is kind of the occult idea with like the perennial philosophy and, 
all this sort of woo woo stuff. So I, I don't know. I, I, I try to balance it out and you know, what makes sense and what are they trying to, what are they trying to pull here? You know what I mean? Like what, how are they going to use this to their advantage? Yeah. So how does like, how does one take all the kind of knowledge that you have and then kind of bring it down to earth, I guess. And like, what are the practical uses of what you know, or are there none? <laughs> oh man, that's a curveball! <laughs> Damn Chrissy. You hit me with the hard ones. Um, Hmm. I mean, it's interesting. It's so interesting. It, it's yeah. like, it's academia. It's like, it's. Yeah. That's know. one of the, that's, that's probably one of the big questions that I get a lot is like, okay, now what? Okay. So these symbols exist and, and, and my sort of belief is that they push symbolism through film and entertainment to talk to us on a subconscious level and it influences our actions and behaviors. Well, like what, what's the practical purpose and, and what can we do about that? And, uh, you know, my, my thing is always like, uh, I'm more of like spreading awareness of the idea. So like, for instance, uh, I'll, I'll give you an app. Here we go. I'll give you an applicable example. Um, I listened to, I, I was raised always drawn to the dark arts of, uh, you know, like Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, I listened to really like dark metal and, you know, horror movies and like all this stuff. I've always been very fascinated by it. Um, and, you know, I watched Faces of Death when I was like 15. You know what I mean? Like these horrors. You've been in touch with it. Yeah, everybody has a dark side. And it's like, yeah. the more in touch you are with yours, the better and more balanced of a person you're going to be anyway. Oh, really? Yeah, that's interesting. Well, anyway, so like, so, so I know this about myself now. And I know that like, if I get too deep into some of these things, like certain kinds of music or whatever, like it can affect me negatively and it puts me in a bad mood. So like, mm. I try to like, I try to be cognizant of my emotions and my feelings and be aware that this art has an influence on me and it doesn't always make me the best person for the people around me. Um, yeah. I, I, I say, feel that way when I listen to a lot of pop, like if, and, and basically when I was watching a lot of those music videos for like the swap cast, we get, we did about like the occult divas mm -hmm. and I was just like, Oh, just all this lady Gaga. It's making me feel like really detached from oh, like, really? my yeah. center. Yeah. And, 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 and it's probably different for everyone. Right. Like, and, and that's kind of my shtick is like, cause like, I'm not going to be the guy that's like, Oh my God, you should ban a uh, wet ass pussy. And like, I'm not <laughs> that guy. Like, I don't like, you know, I enjoyed that video myself as a, <laughs> as a, as a, an adult with a conscious, <laughs> what I can watch, you know, it had a good beat. I feel torn too. I'm like, this is a catchy song. <laughs> it is if you try catchy. to not listen to the lyrics, it's like, okay. Yeah, I had me blush and I was like, good night. I can't be <laughs> yeah, it's basically YouTube. like sexting. It's basically yeah. like the lyrics are foreplay. It's like, it's hard to not, especially yeah. for a dude to like hear that and be like, hmm, okay, hello. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, like, I'll never be that guy with the bullhorn talking about, let's shut the videos down and the YouTube down because, like, th there is an adult audience that we can make independent thoughts of our own as to what we want to watch and how it influences us. Um, now, the kids is a whole different matter, like, but I don't have kids. So like, ain't my job. You know what I mean? Like, so like watch your kids, watch, see what they're looking at. And I'm sure it's not a fun opinion for people to hear that, but like, um, I'm not going to be the guy that's like, Oh, we should ban things because I think it has a negative influence on people. I think, uh, as a conscious human being that you should take it upon yourself to do the work it takes to understand what these things are. And that's my whole thing is trying to raise awareness of it because there's not a lot of voices out there talking about this. You know, it's like I, I'm this tiny little voice in a in a small pool of conspiracy truthers talking about it. And, you know, and you've got this sea of mass media, mainstream media. They're like, they're certainly not going to talk about it. So yeah. Like, and it's like you're in this stream and this or like you're the fish and you're also swimming upstream but the stream also has like the mainstream media in it. So it's like, you've got these other forward moving fish telling you that you're stupid. <laughs> yeah. That's a great analogy. Someone should cartoon that up real quick. Yeah. yeah that's, that's exactly it. That, so yeah, that's, that's, you know, if I had to answer that question, well, what's the practical purpose of this, that um, betterment of your own life, you know, managing your own life, managing your emotions, trying to be a better person, not just for yourself to feel better, but for the people around you, uh, you know, it sounds silly, but like, that's the way it is. It's like, it, 
it's so smart. It's like, these are such good points to bring up. Like we should be managing our thoughts, uh, like what we consume, right? Like everyone's like obsessed with like, oh, right, with their weight, losing weight, being healthy, right? Like what's in our food, but we don't have the same discernment for the thoughts we have, the music we listen to, like, yeah, listening to your body. Like if you listen, if you're listening to music that makes you upset, like, yeah, switch it up a little bit. You know, you want to mm-hmm. always be doing things that like fuel the joy and like the life force in you. Yeah, because a lot of that, a lot of that, like sort of dark music and stuff will put you in a sort of nihilistic mode. Uh, and sometimes you need to balance that out with some like sort of more peaceful music. So like you don't feel so separated and detached from your, your fellow man and woman. And like, you know, eh, yeah. it's hard to explain without. You know. Notice the ways in which you're unconsciously closing yourself off you know, from others and yeah. like your potential and the higher power and all that. Yes. Yeah. Cause I, cause I have a lot of like anxiety and depression and like, I will isolate the shit out of myself. Like if yeah. I don't watch it and I got to really like take the steps to uh, make sure that doesn't happen consciously because like, it's very natural for me to, I'll, I'll seriously, I could sit in my home for days. I mean, at 2020, I'm like, <laughs> this is my dream right here. I love it. Oh yeah. Do you ever have days like, and I think if I live by myself, these days would be <laughs> occurring way more often, but like, you don't even turn on the TV. You just like, like look at the walls or you're like, yeah, you listen to the music that puts you in a bad place and you're like just looping the bad thoughts and yeah, yep. I don't know. Huh. And you, you need to shake yourself out of it sometimes. Yeah. You're like, yeah. that's why it's like, I don't love running, but it's like, I've started to like really just like go for a run, do something physical, break a sweat every day. Cause it, it like, it shakes you up. It mm-hmm. keeps you in like a positive headspace. Yeah. A hundred percent. And that's, um, that's how, I know people are tired of hearing me talk about CrossFit, but that's my job as a CrossFitter. You've but only the, mentioned uh, it twice. <laughs> no, no, but like that's you, you get, cause I've done uh, a lot of meditation. Like I said, like I studied a lot of Buddhist techniques and stuff and um, meditation helps me tremendously. And when I CrossFit, like you go, your, your mind goes into the same state that I, I, I found cause you're in, cause there's all these stimulus is going on and you're trying to like, keep up and like you're focused so hard on your breath and trying to just stay conscious and keep moving that it puts you in a meditative state. And, um, I think that has a lot to do for me specifically. I don't, I can't speak for everyone else, but like, as far as like my mental health, it helps me. Um, yeah. another good example, cause you were talking about, um, uh, what were we talking about? Well, anyways, like food and nutrition, right? Like mm-hmm. it, it's, it's the same argument for fast food. Like that's just poison. Like I, I'm not saying let's ban fast food restaurants because you know what? Every now and then I want some fast food. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's yeah, just sometimes you're on the road. That. Yeah, and yeah. you don't have time. Yeah, but like so, like to me, it's like we we all need to grow up and be adults and understand and research these things and be like, oh, I shouldn't eat fast food three times a day every day. Like, yeah, you shouldn't. It really is too. Like, that's what I found so much of like the last few years, like, especially since like my mom passed, it's like, what are the ways in which I can like mother myself, nurture myself. And sometimes it's like, Hey, I need to like stop what I'm doing and take a bath or like, I need to, I mean, when massages were a thing, you know, like go get a massage, but like, it's, it's like that little voice where you're like, it's so easy to ignore and like, I need to be productive. I need to get things done. But it's like, sometimes you need to like mom yourself and like, Oh yeah, I haven't eaten yet. And it's like, Oh, it's two 30. I haven't eaten yet today. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. And, and all these things are like, not something that comes easy to me. I don't want people to get the wrong idea that I'm sitting here on my high horse. I'm, I'm struggling too. I'm trying to figure it out too. So like, uh, it, I don't think it's an easy journey, but like a lot of people don't even take the first step or even consider that they should look at any of this stuff. Yeah. And it's, it's true. It's like what you're saying. It's just about being aware listening and feeling for how you're responding to the things you surround yourself with. And also like, I feel like your work shows people like the occult. It's not just like, Ooh, Halloween, you know, it's like insidious. It's more um, subtle than that. Yes. And it's yeah. Pervasive. Like superhero movies, you know, yeah. like the superhero yeah. movies that they have occult messages in them too. And like, you wouldn't think that watching a superhero movie, you know, but that they're in there. Yeah. And I was like, when I was talking to off the grid, Ryan, I mean, he's, woo, he's really out there, but it's, he's fun to talk to. And he was like, if you were to take your water every day and write, I love myself on it and then drink it, he's like, you're going to get more benefits from it. And I was like, whoa, but I'm like, you know what? That shit is right. Of course. I mean, I mean, of course it makes sense. You know, that's great. I love that. I love that myself. shit. Yeah. 
Yeah, little things. Little things go a long way. Like my uh, my my pumpkin spice tea here has a message that says, "The gate to happiness is self compassion." Oh, you know? yeah. Just a little tea bag. Just little a little tea bag happy little tea bag. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. You're a delight, Isaac. I'm a big fan. Um, and I feel like it's good because we've planted a lot of seeds where if people are interested in the topics you mentioned, like they can go into just like what you said. It's, um, is it gumroad.com? Is that your, that's, that's, that's where I sell books. I sell, I sell okay. signed paperbacks because I've got a whole catalog of books here. So like some people want the signed paperbacks. You can get them on Amazon too. Uh, gumroad.com, like bubblegum. Uh, so it's gumroad.com backslash Isaac W is where you can get the signed books. Um, and I've got them on the audible too. I'm a big audio book guy. Like I, I love audible. I've been, yeah. I consume at least half of my books as audio books. So I, I put them all on there too. Self narrated almost all of them. Um, yeah. But yeah, this, it's, it's uh, I love the conspiracy world. I love the truth of the world. Uh, I know I, I, I get into it with some truth or sometimes it's all sort of like this, the show side of the show business sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, Cause it's I, fun. I, it's fun to talk about what could be and what's possible. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. way more fun than listening to what the uh, mainstream tries to tell you is the truth when like they don't know either. So yeah, they're trying to, I feel like they're trying to shut down free thought and intellectual curiosity. And it's like, here's, yeah, we've chewed up and regurgitated this and this is all you should know. And that <laughs> yeah. should never be, you know, <laughs> Did you watch uh, Social Dilemma on Netflix? No, no. I like that's literally what I want to do uh, either today or tomorrow. I've heard uh, such good reviews. Yeah, it's pretty good, but it's funny to me because about halfway through, you know, because I don't want to spoil plots or whatever, but like the first half is like social media is engineered to like hijack your brain like a drug and it's terrible. Then like halfway through, like they show you uh, this dramatization of a kid being, uh, you know, manipulated by social media. And about halfway through, it takes the sharp left into, and now the kid loves conspiracy theories and he's going to go to prison <laughs> and he's forever attached hey, to his phone. Hey, oh. right? Oh, that like, to minute, me what? sounds like, oh, don't have an open mind, but not uh -huh. too open. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm curious to hear what you think about it. That's That was my take on it. I watched it just the other night. Okay. And it's like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> Where, I have what to happened watch this. here? I have to watch this tonight. Yeah. Like, we're telling you the truth. You know, it's like another, it gives them another chance to like, point people and what they to what they mm -hmm. think is the is the the way as the mandalorian would say or the path or uh right even even in this <laughs> what seems like an open-ended you know free thought think about the effect your social media is having on you it's like they're going to take the opportunity to like also yeah. point you well, in, a, in a certain way uh-huh i love it isaac where can people find you follow you support you uh where else other than uh, 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 yeah so for people just trying to get started that don't, don't want to dive into books yet uh i've got an instagram at isaac Weishop, where i post a lot of curious um some of the symbolism some of the photos from the films and the movies that we're, we're talking about tv shows and, and sometimes i'll post little clips on there sometimes i do ig lives where i can answer questions uh, so people can start out there and if they don't do social media, I got a blog, IlluminatiWatcher.com. I haven't written blog posts in a long time. Cause like I said, Google shadow banned me. Uh, but you can, you can dig around there, find some older content, find all my podcasts, which is on, you know, I'm on all the podcast places, conspiracy theories and unpopular culture. Uh, you can find me on, you know, all of them, Spotify, iTunes, everything. Um, yeah. And then, you know, if you want to go deep, Amazon and audible, all my books. Oh, I think I want to go deep. Sorry, right. that sounded sexual. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I'm still I'm still recovering from yesterday's episode with Jay Dyer, which basically I should have titled it like the episode where Jay asked me if I've read a book and I say no because it was about like 10 times. Have you read this? Have you read this? Have you seen this? And every time I was like, no. And I got like embarrassed toward the end. I'm like, I haven't read anything. Yeah, <laughs> like, Jay, Jay will do that to you. I'm, in fact, I'm, uh, oh. we've done a lot of shows together. I'm doing another one with him here soon. Um, the uh he'll he'll make you feel dumb just don't listen to him he doesn't know what he's I'm talking like, about he's making it all up as he goes i think anyway I've had a lot of, i'm like jay i've had a lot of jobs i've had a lot of full-time jobs i travel a lot i've done comedy <laughs> I'm trying to find time to vacuum my place yeah, yeah just like well jay. you know and that's and that's the beauty about like jay's books uh because i've got his book esoteric hollywood one and two um and and my books like we we try to condense the information i i try to simplify it as much as i can um, so I'll read, you know, tons of books, watch tons of movies and I'll sort of filter it down. Like I got a book on the star Wars conspiracy 
talking about all the occult Ooh. stuff and start the whole Star Wars series, minus the Mandalorian. It was before that was a thing. Uh, you know, it's only like I don't know, 100 pages, 150 pages, maybe. And, it's doable. You know, it's yeah. like you, I like to get in and get out. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't get try in to and get out. Buy tribes of uh, you know monster books. I don't, I don't want to read a 500 page book. So nobody does. Yeah, nobody does. They're for coasters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. They, yeah. Those are the yeah. basics. Uh, the the uh, the Instagram at as at Isaac Weishop is probably the most popular. So w- check it out there. If you like it, yeah. you can go deeper. W e i s h a u p t. That's correct. Isaac, two A's and a C. That's correct. <laughs> Commonly misspelled as I S S A C. Really? <laughs> yeah, all the time. I don't know if there's like an autocorrect on people's stuff. They always message me with the wrong, and that's okay. That's it's not my real name, so I don't care what they spell it yeah. as. Yeah. Wow, you're so mysterious. Thanks, okay. Isaac. <laughs> this is great. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Chrissy. Appreciate it.